welcome to the Norman White Tower in London, an Anglo-Saxon city. I'm Bishop Gandalf, and I helped build the tower and the beautiful chapel just after the Norman conquest. You can find out more in a little sermon I'm going to deliver later. But in the meantime, bienvenue à The Scoop. Hail and salute me, haul me off and scoop me, get me to the church on time. What can the White Tower tell us about how the Normans behaved and what they believed? Baptise your brain in the holy water of fact, with our experts living at large in the House of the Lord. Culture is cool! St John's Chapel and the White Tower is a beautiful sanctuary. It's an expression of Normans' Christian beliefs and a statement of their wealth and style. Let's look at some of its most striking features. The chapel is built partly from Cannes stone, quarried in Normandy and shipped all the way over to London. The bright colour of this stone would have stood out on the landscape of Anglo-Saxon London and inside the chapel was impressively decorated. Capitals can be found at the top of columns. Here are capitals in different styles. Why is that, you ask? Well, construction of the White Tower was paused in the 1080s, during which the instyles of Norman architecture changed. So, the styles of capitals changed to keep up with changing fashions. Wait a minute. These paving slabs look about as new as my bathroom floor back in Brooklyn. Is this chapel even old at all? That's a good question, Detective. The chapel is very well preserved, but it will have changed over the centuries. And this floor wasn't put in until the 1960s. Oh, shucks. So it's newer than my bathroom floor. Franklin, can you not interrupt this report, please? Hey, I'm asking the big questions here. And I'm asking big questions about your redundancy package. <gasps> Up here! Is what someone would be saying if they were standing up there in the Triforium. I'm not allowed because of health and safety, but that doesn't mean we can't have fun. The Triforium walkway was possibly used as a gallery by spectators to look down into the main space, which was called the nave. And the rounded outer wall of the chapel on the eastern side of the building would have been one of the first things people saw approaching London up the River Thames, demonstrating the king's religious devotion to the outer world, adding to his political power. Wait a minute! The glass in these windows doesn't look old at all! Franklin, don't make me come over there. It's okay, Jess. I've got this. You raise a good point. The window openings are original Norman, but the glass is not. So what would have been in these windows instead? Well, it could have been wooden shutters or very thin horn from cattle animals. Cattle? It's always cattle. Enough! We now have a special guest in the studio. She's called Adela and has come across the English Channel to speak to us. Hello from the other side. I'm going to have to stop you there, Adela, for copyright reasons. Adela, you're the daughter of William the Conqueror, Countess of Blois of France, but you're also referred to as Adela of Normandy and Adela of England. You're truly an international aristocrat. Yes, our Norman culture has spread far and wide. That's true. In England, many of the words we still use in law and government come from Norman French. You're welcome. Now, Adela, why did London's White Tower include a chapel in the first place? When my father conquered England, he didn't just want a strong military presence. He wanted to say, hello, it's me. Please stay on topic, Adela. And impress the Anglo-Saxons with the grandeur of Norman culture. The chapel showed this to the people. And what's more, to stamp our superior Norman culture on England, my father abolished slavery or thraldom, making all Anglo-Saxons free. Free? You're rolling in some deep delusion there, Adela. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle says that in 1094, many people were forced to build the White Tower for free. Pah! That's biased. That chronicle was written in the primitive language of Old English. We Normans never bothered with it. Instead, we ruled England in the learned language of Latin. But Old English was used by your father's government for four years after the conquest. Well, we couldn't change everything all at once. And besides, that was only until the rebellions of 1070, when the Anglo-Saxons revealed themselves for what they truly were, a nation of fools. <laughs> Those rebellions, they broke my family's heart. 
Never mind, I'll find someone. Well, like thank you, Adela. That's the end of the interview, only because any longer would definitely mean we get sued. Now, to tie off this nearly bursting water balloon of fact and throw it at your mind, here's Bishop Gundolf with his much anticipated sermon from the White Chapel. I'm Gundolf, but you can call me Bishop G, and I'm storming with the Norman through history. Yes, I'm rapping, so scrapping, we're gonna have a grapple with the story of this glorious, victorious chapel. I studied as a monk in Normandy, but thought England would offer much more to me. And William wanted to make the English car with the glowering power of a Norman white tower. A super vast construction, pious and solemn, in the Roman style, rounded arches and columns. Twenty years of labor, best tower in the nation, dear England, you're now under Norman domination. And at its heart, a chapel to St. John, to show the Saxons who said God is own. And celebrate our face in a form architectural, beautiful, powerful, and most effectual. You see the white tower? Gondolf made it! You know this verse? Gondolf slayed it, slayed it, slayed it, slayed it. Wait a minute, Gondolf. I've been studying an old text. The Textus Rufensis, the only evidence of your involvement with the construction of the White Tower. And it turns out the part mentioning you was added centuries later by a different writer. Were you involved in the construction of the White Tower? Did you even go here? Oh my goodness. Franklin Detective, you've actually found a convincing piece of historical evidence after all this time. I have? Oh boy. This is the greatest day of my life! I'm gonna get ice cream! And you're getting a sorbet of summary. The White Tower's chapel reflects the Normans' Christian faith, wealth and lavish building style compared to that of the Anglo-Saxons. Its layout strengthened Norman power relations and confirmed the deep bond between religion and the monarchy. But what do you think of all of this? And what would you say are the most important things the White Tower tells us about Norman religion and culture? Keep asking questions and follow your nose like it's got its own Snapchat. Catch you on the scoop side.